John Hayden. Away from Sandston, Virginia. And John Hayden is the next person who's. He asked me to speak for okay. him. Okay. What's your name? I'm sorry. What's your name? Susan Hathaway, Sandston, Virginia. Okay. okay. Honorable Mayor, Councilmen, citizens of Charlottesville, and the Commonwealth, since I last spoke in these chambers, much has been made about the fact that I and a few others who spoke against the proposed amendment to remove the Lee Jackson holiday are not Charlottesville residents, as if that somehow makes what we have to say irrelevant. After witnessing the way speakers in this chamber were treated who dared to have an opinion different than those of the vocal citizens in attendance, I can understand why the dozens of citizens of Charlottesville who have contacted us do not feel comfortable attending these meetings and speaking up in this atmosphere. Charlottesville has a rich and honorable Confederate history. On March 7, 1864, the ladies of Charlottesville presented a hand-sewn flag to the men of Stewart's Light Artillery after the unit facing five to one odds stopped the Yankee Army from burning and destroying Charlottesville. The battle flag was carried by the unit until it surrendered in April of 1865 and is now on display in the Jefferson County Museum in Charleston, West Virginia. The flag now shows the patina of age along with the rents of battle, but it continues to serve as a reminder of what might have been the worst day in Charlottesville's history, if not for the courage of its brave defenders. Since fo some folks in West Virginia had a replica made and asked us to show it to the assembly today, I would like to again point out the real and present danger of the precedence you are sitting, setting if you decide to eliminate this holiday tonight. If you take it upon yourselves to strike down a holiday that was established by the duly elected representatives of this city, you are opening the door to have the same thing happen to Thomas Jefferson Day, for instance, in the future, should a future council decide he is not worthy of honoring. I and many of those present here witnessed one of your own citizens call for the removal of every trace of Thomas Jefferson from the very city that he helped build and receive applause and cheers in this chamber following his remarks. Certainly, you must see that once you open the door, there will be no end to the PC cleansing of our heritage and history. In the background of the proposed amendment, Charlottesville's commitment to be a community of mutual respect is, excited, is cited, which reads, in all endeavors, the, people, the city of Charlottesville is committed to racial and cultural diversity, inclusion, racial reconciliation, economic justice, and, and equity. How can you possibly claim cultural diversity when you choose to dishonor Confederate veterans whose descendants make up a large segment of your population? How can you suggest that um, this amendment will promote racial reconciliation when it serves to divide people instead of bringing them together? How can you claim that this decision is unbiased and without prejudice when it singles out an entire group of people and dishonors their heritage? I understand that at least one member of this council has suggested that the Confederate monuments here in Charlottesville be removed. And by your actions tonight, you will show the Commonwealth and the nation whether or not you are heading down that very dangerous path. But even if you choose to move forward with these desecrations, and should your backwater tyranny temporarily succeed, you will, I hope, ultimately fail. History will remain unchanged, and the sterling character of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson will remain long after your names are forgotten. I urge you to please set aside the prejudice and bias that has led to this proposed amendment and leave the Lee Jackson holiday as it is. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, this, and Dave Chapman.